weeks of violent protests, the youth mobilized in the streets, and deadly confrontations with police. Protesters here prepared to give up everything to demand democratic civilian rule, but now a new year is bringing in new problems for them. The Sudanese Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok has confirmed he will now step down, while thousands marched against his recent deal to agree to share power with the army. His absence leaves the army solely in charge. I have tried my best to stop the country from sliding towards disaster. Sudan is crossing now a dangerous turning point that threatens its whole survival. On Sunday, military forces staged another violent crackdown on dissent in Khartoum. But that hasn't deterred many of those in the streets. I think the international community does not have the final say. The street has the final say. And the international community can move according to what the street wants. It's a defiance that hasn't waned since military abruptly took over from the civilian-led government, even when they backpedaled, reinstating Mr. Hamduk. For the protesters, the military must leave power entirely. And while the people may be in the streets in hoodies and T-shirts against the heavily armed security forces, they have a powerful force in their corner, with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken condemning the military and threatening punitive action. On social media, activists have said 2022 will be the year of the continuation of the resistance. Revenge is something generally associated with any military coup. This will only push the Sudanese youth to continue their path to achieving all their demands. Demands against an army that say they will not tolerate protests and within a country that's on the brink of total collapse. Stephanie Prentice, BBC News.